I used to get nervous like when I was younger mm-hmm. talking to people. And I, I, yeah. at a certain point, I just discovered, oh, just ask about them. Hey, it's Walter here, and you're at the Think Profit Podcast, where we're going to help you develop a rock-solid trading confidence and avoid the potentially endless cycle of system switching. Right, Hugh? That's right. We're going to help you develop a wealth mindset, develop a trading strategy that fits your core personality, and help you overcome the obstacles that stop over 90% of traders. All right, Hugh. Sounds good. You ready to go? Yeah, let's do this. Hey, Walter, uh, what do you know about game theory and how it applies to trading? Okay. So this is really interesting. Actually, I'll put a link in the show notes to some people who want to see this because uh, there's a good example of this. I think you can you can play along with it. So I won't go down that rabbit hole. I'll let you guys click on the show notes and go down that one. But um, the way I think of it is because I've read some books on it that are really complex. Mm-hmm. And I kind of think of game theory, maybe differently to most, in two ways. I think of it as in probabilities. So in terms of probabilistic thinking, which is really good for traders obviously. And then the other side of it is like perception, right? And awareness of what other people are thinking. So kind of like, like if you're in a situation, Hugh, where you're at a party and you're talking to some people and, you know, you'll notice some people aren't very perceptive of what other people are thinking and that maybe they just go on and on and keep talking about themselves (laughs) and everyone else is just sitting there going, oh my God, like, you know what I mean? But they, but the person doesn't realize that they're like turning everyone off by sitting there and just rabbiting on about themselves. That's a person that has like low interpersonal intelligence, we would say. Right. Mm -hmm. And so with game theory, I think part of it is being aware of what the other participants in the game are doing. So poker is a great example of this Mm -hmm. where like, if you bluff, are you, or you think someone else might be bluffing, you're trying to figure out what's going on, right? That's one element of game theory, which is sort of almost like psychology and interpersonal relations and understanding that. In trading, it could be looking at where all the orders are. So you can look on websites and brokers will show you where all the buy orders, where all the sell orders are, right? Mm-hmm. Same thing with open position ratio. You can see what is the crowd doing? Are most traders buying or selling or what's going on? So that's one element as I see it of game theory. And I really love the open position ratios. If you guys are interested in that, I've got plenty of videos on YouTube all about that stuff. And I can put those in the link down there if you guys want to go down that rabbit hole. I don't want to get into that right now, but that's part of it. Understanding what are the other participants doing? So orders, where the order placements are and where the open positions ratios are at is really important in that sense. But the other side of it is probabilities. And it's really fascinating to me that a lot of traders don't understand it right? Mm-hmm. So probabilities come into a lot of places. Like probabilities come in when, it, when you're trying to decide, is my trading system in a, in a drawdown that is normal or not normal? And another one is, is my reward to risk ratio sufficient to make profit given my win rate? Mm-hmm. That's another thing, right? So all of these elements of probabilities are very important. And so like, for example, let's say you, you like to trade trendy kangaroo tails, which is just a pullback after the market's been going up, right? Mm-hmm. And it pulls, let's say it's good or, or down, either way it goes up after the market's been going up. And, he, and it's a signal that says, okay, the pullback's over, right? Now, let's say you, you like trading those, you've back tested them, you get a certain win percentage, it's 58% or whatever. But you find that if you add another element to that, which is understanding where the orders are placed on the charts mm. to your kangaroo tails, trendy king or tells you actually really improve that strategy. And that probably would be the case. Like if you saw a whole lot of people who had their orders on the, uh, were basically on the other side of your kangaroo tail, right? Then now, then that means that you would know that there's a lot of people thinking that it's going to break out and it's going to go the other way. Right. Mm-hmm. Or if there's a lot of orders down where your order is going to be right. Or if there's a lot of orders where you ta- where you take profit is going to be, that'll be like a magnet in the market. Well, if it gets closer to really want to get there. Right. So all of those things I think are to me are really important in terms of game theory. So to me, game theory is thinking about what are the probabilities, right. That this is going to go this way or that way. Mm-hmm. And so what should I do for, you know, my overall, you know, I'm trying to make profit here. And the other thing is, what are the other people doing? And trading is so different because it's not like a closed system, like a poker game where you only have five people, you know, and there are a limited number of possibilities, although there are many, you know, with all the different hands and everything, there's, it still is limited. Whereas with a trading, it's kind of like an open system and these things can come in and impact the markets in really drastic ways that sometimes we're not even aware of. 
Mm-hmm. But I think just understanding what your other market participants are doing and what they're thinking and understanding what where the probabilities lie is probably the most important thing in terms of thinking of trading like a game. What are, what are your thoughts about this? I actually don't have too much input on this one. Uh, I haven't really right. looked into game theory that much. So I just wanted to get your ideas on this yeah. one. Well, yeah, the thing is like, if you get in some of these books, they're like super mathematical, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, they don't, and really a lot of game theory is just thinking, what is, what is my opponent or what are the other participants doing? Mm-hmm. And if I do this, what are they going to do? You know, it's really, it's all, it's really just that. Like, and so I think you can really simplify. I'm a big fan of the 80, 20 thing, right? Mm-hmm. Where, you know, you just cut it down and go, you know, just do this much to get maximum, you know what I mean? And that's sort of, I like that approach. And some people won't, they, they'll, 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 they'll want to get deep into it and whatever. And that's fine. But I think just thinking in terms of what, are, what are the other people doing? That's a big part of game theory. Hey there, I hope you're finding this episode useful. I just wanted to let you know that Walter and I give away something valuable every month that helps traders improve their skills. You can enter to win by simply leaving an iTunes review and leaving a comment on our YouTube videos. At the end of each month, we'll look at the comments and reviews from the month and we'll pick a winner at random. Each comment and each review counts for one entry during the month that it's submitted. So if you're interested in that, be sure to enter after this podcast is over. All right, back to the episode. You can map it out and, and, and make charts and everything and, and, and you know, um, choice charts and all that stuff. But it really comes down to thinking about, you know, where, where do the best probabilities lie? What is likely to happen mm-hmm. versus unlikely? which is not always the way we think. Like a lot of times we think that what's likely to happen is what happened last time, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah. And that's not true. That's not necessarily true at all. So yeah. So we're not really set up to think mathematically. We're more emotional creatures in general um, and reactionary. So yeah. So I think if people just start like just a real simple um, task would be if you have a trade and you go, okay, I'm going to buy here. What are the people thinking that are going to sell? In the exact same situation, hmm. what do they see? You know, just trying hmm. to break out of your filter and the way you see the market. That's a really big part of it, I think. Just a lot understanding. of crowd psychology, you think? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. just going, okay, like I look at, sometimes what will happen is a kangaroo tail will print and, and I don't take it. And I explain in my videos, the reason I'm not taking it, because I like, let's say there's a, uh, let's say there's a, a resistance level right here, right? Mm-hmm. And the kangaroo tail goes through it like this. Okay, so you have a big kangaroo tail. Well, there's a big difference between having a kangaroo tail that like starts here and goes across that level, that, su- that resistance level versus one that's kind of on top of it and sitting on top of it. Mm-hmm. Because the one that's on top of it is a, is a, a breakthrough and a bounce and it's going to go higher. But the one that's sitting below it is going to, it just penetrates it and it's going to go lower. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's sometimes hard to see the difference, but like understanding that the people that see that kangaroo tail on top of the support resistance, they think it's a reversal. And then I'm the guy that thinks it's, it's going to, it's a trend continuation pattern. You you know what I mean? Like thinking in Mm -hmm. terms of that and knowing the difference between the two is I think really important because it just, it just helps you out in life. Just thinking about other perspectives, you'll be a better conversationalist. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If you can get in the head of somebody else, people like it when you ask questions about themselves, you know? Mm-hmm. like as you as you've noticed <laughs> you know yeah, yeah like they do they really do it's it's mm-hmm. a great way to for people to go oh i really like that hugh you know he's he's a good guy oh really what what'd you like about him? well he just seems like a real friendly guy you know <laughs> well what what does hugh do oh i don't i don't really we didn't really talk about that yeah because the whole time <laughs> he was letting you talk about yourself you know and that sort of thing you know what i mean that that's yeah, uh, yeah. I, I used to get nervous like when i was younger mm-hmm. talking to people and I, yeah. at a certain point, I just discovered, oh, just ask about them and then they'll yeah. do all the talking and it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, I was the same. Yeah, I was the same. I would always like deflect off into, uh, you know, like they would say something. Oh, yeah, blah, blah. What about you? You know, like I would always do that. Mm-hmm. And now I'm so old. I'm just like, whatever. whatever. Like, <laughs> yeah, I don't even exactly. like I can see, you know. When people start doing that to me, I can see it a mile away. And I'm like, yeah, OK, man. Yeah. All right. You know, like I'm just whatever. Yeah, 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 I don't even care. But like when I was younger, I was really aware of it, like you say, and I would always just kind of like shift it back because I didn't want the spotlight on me, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Thanks, Walter. Thanks. See you. See ya. All information in this podcast is for educational and informational purposes only and is not trading or investment advice.